Hey, Storytime grown-ups. It's me, Miss Lisa. I am the Storytime person at Worthington Park Library. And I also am a mom. I've had four kids and I'm doing at-home preschool myself at home. And my background is as an early childhood educator and I taught preschool for several years. So we are gonna go through a few ideas related to our theme this week for story times. Our theme of the week was birds. So Miss Karen did a fun story time all about birds and featuring bird main characters. And we're going to talk a little bit about some ways that you can extend that story time with some hands-on learning activities. The first idea I have actually came out of what's happening in my house right now because I went a little loopy and we went ahead and got chickens. So we have chickens living in our house right now and my kids are learning a lot about birds through that. Um, they're learning a lot about what it takes for chickens to be happy and so I thought it would be a fun idea for other kids if they wanted to do a dramatic play of pretending to have chickens. So we have um, this one takes a little bit of prep. I usually try to limit the number of activities that take prep work on your part. Um, and I try to offset it by making sure that those are at least activities that will hold your child's attention for a while. Um, so I started with just a paper plate that I folded in half, cut some tail feathers out, and then use those tail feathers to help make the waddle and the beak for my bird. Sorry, it's very loud bird. Uh, it might be louder than my actual chickens at my house. And then I just drew on some wings and eyeballs. And so that is my chicken. And I have a couple of these that I made. I've also made them some nests for um, their little boxes so they, they can lay eggs. So if you have any extra boxes laying around your house, like shoe boxes or anything like that, you can lay them down on their sides. If you have just a storage unit that you can, like a, you know, a cubby organizer, you can use that. And just, I made coffee filters that I colored yellow. Um, you can let your child help with doing the fringe cut around the edge because that is a very normal way for them to start their cutting skills. Um, so they can help you make this. They can definitely help you color the straw because um, that does not take a ton of skill. It does take a while though. So you can let them help making their nests for their birds. And then you can get their birds all situated. And then... <gasps> when the birds go play, you can have them have laid some eggs. So your kids can practice collecting the eggs too. With the eggs, you could do um, practicing counting. So if we have, you know, four chickens, how many eggs might we get today? And not every chicken lays an egg every day. In fact, I don't think any chickens lay one egg every single day. Um, but a lot of chickens will lay eggs several times a day or several times a week, not per day. That would be a lot. Um, so you can go ahead and you could, you could stick the little eggs in there or they can. Uh, we had a lot of fun playing this here at story time last year. I think that might have been the first year I introduced it. Um, and it lasted a lot longer than I thought it would. So maybe maybe yours will have some fun with it too. Also including an egg carton so they can collect the eggs and put them in the egg carton. I forgot to grab one this morning. Um, and then you can work on you know how many you have, how many are left empty. It's going to equal 12 or 18 or 24 depending on your egg carton. Or you can cut it down to be for 10 and work on those 10 frame skills we talked about last week. All right, the next idea I had was making paper birds. So you would just make a paper airplane and then decorate it um, to look like a bird. This was done by my preschooler. Um, and then uh, if you need any help figuring out how to fold a paper airplane, if it's done, been a little while, you can definitely find instructions online. But basically you fold it in half like I think we call that like a hot dog. You fold down both sides on an angle and then you fold down the wings. So uh, my daughter had fun making the beak because orange is her favorite color and then the eyes and then all these pretty feathers. And then what we were gonna do is we're gonna throw it and see how far it goes. You can make predictions, which is just the fancy science word for guessing. 
Um, so you can have your kids work on making a hypothesis, seeing what types of folds help theirs go longer, or you can work on measuring. And if you have a yardstick or a tape measure, something that they can start getting an idea of distance and measurements, that would be a fantastic way to extend that activity as well. So it's not just an art project. It's also some science and some math. If you have an older one that's really into airplanes, you can talk about thrust and how your arm is the thrust and you can talk about lift um, and you can talk about drag. And my dad is a retired pilot, so this is something I learned a lot as a child, but not every kid necessarily is that into airplanes. So if yours isn't, don't, don't bother with that, it's okay. All right, the next idea I had, I don't have an example here for you, is to make a birdhouse. So if you have this stuff to make a real birdhouse, you could absolutely build a real birdhouse together. That would be a really fun activity for both of you. If you don't and you want to build pretend birdhouses with blocks or um, Duplos or magnetiles, my kids have been on a big magnetile kick lately, you can build some pretend birdhouses like that and maybe you can find a stuffed bird or something else in your house that can live in those birdhouses. Um, if you build a real one, lots of fun getting to watch the birds. The other idea I had is to maybe make a bird feeder. So if you don't have any peanut allergies, you could do the peanut butter on the pine cone and then add the bird seed to that. But there are a lot of other ways that you can build a bird feeder too. So if you wanted to do that, you would I think have a good time doing that and maybe get to watch some birds, um, which is always lots of fun. Our next idea is actually watching birds. So I was thinking that if you have a space where you get some birds, we have some trees behind our house, so we get some birds and we can even sit inside and just watch them. Um, but if you go to a, a local park, you would probably be able to see quite a few birds as well. And if you happen to have binoculars, they do really extend the activity. The kids will spend a lot more time looking and trying to find them. They also might heighten the frustration. So if we're having a hard time seeing birds and then we do this and then we can't see anything, that might make it a little bit worse. So it, it definitely depends on your child. My kids also really enjoy using just pretend binoculars like this to help them just focus their eyesight. Or we have uh, toilet paper roll ones that we use too. Another way to extend this activity and to, you know, make it a little more um, of a curriculum, a little more scholastic, would be to add a clipboard. These, I love these little half size clipboards. They're, um, sometimes you can find them just at like a dollar store and sometimes you have to look at maybe one of the office supply stores. But I absolutely love these half size because while the full-size ones are great, they're a little hard for kiddos to carry around. So sometimes I prefer the half size and then I just cut a piece of paper in half, stick it in here and let my kiddos write their notes. And if they're writing down their observations about the birds, so if they're writing down just what they see, um, we talk a lot about what scientists do and scientists that are observing behavior in the wild they write down what they're seeing, what they smell, what they don't taste, don't taste anything, um, you know, but what they're hearing. And they might do sketches to help them remember. So if you see any birds, you can encourage your little one to draw, um, write down what letters they might be hearing in the words that they want to write. And then if they want you to fill it in, you can come in and write, you know, if they write just the B, for bird, you can come in and write bird right underneath it um, to help both of you remember what they were writing. But that'll start to assign meaning to their letters, which is a really fantastic early literacy skill. All right, the next idea I had is a science experiment about how birds eat. So the chickens in my house, it's, it's really interesting to watch them. And I do mean quite literally in my house right now. They have not moved outside yet. But they will peck, peck, peck. Peck, peck, peck. And your kids might have seen the birds outside doing this too. Um, and when they find something, they go like this to swallow it. Um, so the types of birds I have have different kinds of beaks than if you look at 
a flamingo beak or a pelican. They all have different, or there's a few different styles of beaks. I don't have necessarily an example for every style. I would probably add a chopstick or a skewer as well if I were doing this at home. Mm. But I do have, I have these little tongs because some birds grab things like that. I also have my tweezers. If you don't have any tongs, um, you can use some tweezers. Both of those are really wonderful for building those muscles. All right, and for helping us build our writing muscles later. I also grabbed out a scoop um, because some birds' beaks are used to scoop, so a spoon might work well for that as well at home. So I think you can raid your kitchen and look at different birds and see how they eat. See if you can replicate that with stuff you have in your kitchen, especially. Um, it also might be fun if you wanted to introduce some pom-poms to this activity and some pieces of string to represent worms and see which types of um, utensils will work best for that. Totally blanked on that first word. I haven't finished my coffee yet, if you can't tell. All right, the last idea I had is doing an egg sort. And as long as you have those tongs out, I would like to make extra use of them um, and find maybe if you have any of these left over around your house, these plastic eggs. I like to give these several uses because I don't like to waste them. So we will do a lot of things with them and you know, we can get out these bowls and do color matching where we're trying to make sure we put them in the right one. Um, you can you can also do this with pom-poms if you don't have any of the plastic eggs at your house. I mean, you could even color rocks if you wanted, if you didn't have pom-poms or plastic eggs. Um, but you could do that as a sort. This is also a really fun activity in the bathtub. If you put the bowls up on the edge and then stick all of the eggs in the water um, while your child's doing their bath, because eggs are very lightweight and have some air, they may float or they may sink if they have the little holes in the end. So it's a fun sink float experiment on top of the other ideas. Um, you could also pretend that they are pelicans and they have to scoop it up maybe with um, a slotted spoon that has the holes in it so they can scoop it up that way and pretend that they're fish catching them. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can extend that and add to their sorting skills, their math skills, and a little bit more science. This was a science heavy week, wasn't it? All right, grown-ups, that is all the ideas I had for you today, and that's actually all the ideas I had for you this session. We normally take a break toward the end of April and get ready for our summer session and summer reading especially, and we are doing that this year but summer reading might look different. We may not be doing our story times virtually. So if we are able to be together in person, I look forward to seeing you then. If we are not, hopefully these old videos um, and the backlog, because we'll keep all of our videos that we have on YouTube for as long as we can. So hopefully some of these old story times help to tide you over a little bit until we are ready to be back together. I really hope that you've enjoyed this year of getting to do preschool with your child, and I hope that some of these activities have been helpful. I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity to still be able to connect with some of our parents who are going through the same struggles that I've been doing, trying to figure out how on earth to do school at home, um, and I hope that some of these ideas were beneficial to you. Enjoy the rest of your time, and especially enjoy your summer with your little one, and hopefully I will get to see you soon.